The Tyranids are one of, if not the biggest threat to the Imperium of Mankind, and a faction that even the Emperor did not foresee. In the grim darkness of Warhammer 40k, hope is a dangerous word, and it's not really something that gets thrown around a lot, but there are still those who refuse to go quietly into the night. Continuing on from my last video about the Tyranids and the dangers of Hive Fleet Leviathan, uh, which is now juiced up on all of that sweet, sweet biomass from its war with the Orcs. Uh, today, I wanted to cover one of the most important figures fighting against the horrific Tyranid threat. The one man who is himself a bulwark protecting the Imperium and fighting against the terrifying swarms of the Tyranids, Lord Solar Leontis. I wanted to go through what he has been doing in the latest 10th edition lore, and why I think he is exactly the kind of person that the Imperium needs in its darkest hour. He is a character who's been added in the last couple of years with some of the recent additions to the Astra Militarum range for the tabletop game, and yeah, he goes alright. <laughs> Because this guy has got a gigantic set of balls. <laughs> He's the one telling space marines what they should be doing. Uh, so, yeah, he, he's not some roided up space marine, but he doesn't disappoint as one of the most powerful figures in the Imperium. So, now that you know the details, let's get stuck into it. Arcadian Leontis is the High Commander of all Astra Militarum forces in the Segmentum Solar. He is one of the High Lords of Terra, and his rank as the Lord Commander Solar is a position that commands supreme respect. It is a position only given to those capable of handling the burdens that come with it. You may be thinking, yeah, but Kiv, this guy is obviously just sitting on Terra, lucky that he has a chilled out job, because threats don't get to Terra. <laughs> You'd be wrong. See, the thing is, is that he is practical and makes a similar argument to the Custodes in the current setting. He knows that waiting for a threat to reach Terra is useless, because at that point, half the Imperium would be already in flames. In fact, he knows that the best way to safeguard Terra is to take his skills to the front line, where they can have the largest effect. So, he has argued and taken it upon himself to go out and personally lead the Astra Militarum. He is only a man, but he is one who stands at the pinnacle of humanity in the 41st millennium. Leontus is the best example of what mankind is capable of. Knowledge, martial tactics, political influence, he has mastered all of these aspects and thrived in many different theatres for decades. He is a genuine leader that goes above and beyond to inspire and organize the numerous but fragmented pieces of the Imperium. I have a lot of respect for him because he isn't juiced up on Space Marine Gene Seed and he doesn't have some crazy bio augmentations. He has had rejuvenation treatments, yes, but for the most part he's a natural born human, usually leading people from the front line atop his cybernetic horse. His model for the tabletop is really cool and has a lot of nice detail. I enjoyed painting it and a really nice cool extra bit is that the 
base of it is actually the head of a Chaos Titan, which I absolutely loved. <laughs> Leontis is primarily based on Terra, and one of his greatest regrets is being off on a campaign when the Great Rift opened and demons assaulted the very core of the Imperium. In the current setting, not even Terra is safe. The 10th edition core book even mentions that there was a Gene Stealer cult uprising on Terra. Like, it was put down, but still, it shows that threats can happen literally anywhere. The thing that I love about Leontus is that he is genuinely responsible and practical. He knows that the power he wields can have a huge impact on the universe, and so he endlessly works to safeguard the Imperium and ensure that humanity is able to deal with the myriad of threats that are coming. The last time that there was a Lord Solar of this caliber was Lord Solar Macarius. Now, Macarius probably deserves his own video down the track, but the results that he achieved were astounding. He led the Astra Militarum on a campaign and conquered over 1,000 planets in the space of seven years. Like, that is just unbelievable. We are talking like Great Crusade Primarch levels of conquest. Uh, the point that I'm trying to reach is that Leontis has the same position as Macarius and could lead the armies of the Imperium to remind the various factions of the raw power that humanity can dish out. In the 10th edition core book, we learn that he is instrumental along with the Captain General of the Custodes, Trajan Valoris, in organizing the Imperium to fight the new tendrils of Hive Fleet Leviathan. They come up with the plan to best utilize every available Imperial asset as mobile strike forces called Soul Blades. The idea behind this is to use hit-and-run tactics to deal devastating damage to the Tyranid Hive fleets in space and whittle down their forces as much as possible through the hit-and-run style approach of jungle warfare. Even when other leaders like Trajan Valoris formed their own soul blades to lead, he knew that he could do more as an organizer. So he was tireless in his efforts to muster the ponderous might of the Astra Militarum. He is described as being everywhere at once, bargaining, charming, threatening, and even once dueling another lord for power and to expedite the mustering of troops to the best of his abilities. He is grounded and fights against the personal ambition and corruption of the various lords and governors around the Imperium. So he's almost like another version of Gulliman because when he's fighting the Tyranids, uh, he knows that no matter how powerful or how numerous the amount of forces he has, it'll just never be enough to actually have a comfortable victory. My interpretation of this is that Leontis did try to allow for the Tyranids to have certain moments and twists to be able to pull out a victory here and there, so he did have some degree of extra troops kept in reserve. However, it became worse very quickly because a third tendril was then discovered, and this was designated as Grendelus. This was the largest of the new tendrils of Leviathan, and there just simply put, was not enough manpower to be able to deal with this threat. So he ordered a general retreat in order to return back to Sanctum to make a unified stand together for the best chance of victory. For any Imperial forces that were unable to make it back to Sanctum, they had 
simply one order. Go down fighting and take as many of the bastards with you as you possibly can and give them the Emperor's justice. If you didn't think that he was badass enough already, as the ranking commander, he was telling Space Marine chapters on what they should be doing. So he orders them to disengage from their Soul Blades and return to the main stronghold planet of Sanctum. And this was in order to make an organized stand against the Tyranid Tendrils. So doing this was the best way that you could actually make use of your forces. Because if he continued to split everyone else up, then they would just get overwhelmed by the numbers. But at least together, they had a better chance. The Tyranids had an ungodly number of forces concentrated on attacking planets. Their hive fleets were so densely concentrated that to a normal human on a planet, looking at the night sky, it was as if a shadow was crossing over the sky. Uh, this combined with the effects of the shadow in the warp was enough to break the morale and spirit of any sane person. But thanks to Leontis, he actually was able to help limit this. Because he learned about the effects of the shadow in the warp, and he understood that for his forces, for the Imperial Guard, that were a lot of the time the main bulk of the numbers for humanity, that would be a massive impact, and morale would become one of the biggest problems for him. So, to actually fight against the Tyranids with the fervor and the determination that they needed, he made sure that every single battlefield had a whole bunch of Imperial priests and recordings of himself and other generals giving inspirational speeches and was just blasting war hymns the entire time. It's not perfect, sure, but because of this, instead of a panicking rabble of guardsmen, the Tyranids had a much more troublesome time because they had some proper resolve and determination to actually go down fighting. Uh, despite the best efforts of the Imperial Space Forces, holding back the Tyranids in space is impossible. It's basically like trying to stop a flood of water with your bare hands. It, it just can't be done. It's just, it's, you're gonna get overwhelmed and it's gonna spurt out the sides everywhere. So, uh, planetary systems were falling, and the tendrils of Leviathan were converging on Sanctum, the main stronghold planet that Leontis and the Imperial Command were coordinating the war from. I'll have to talk about the space battle in another video, because it's really awesome, but after many unsung acts of bravery and heroics, the Tyranids broke through, and the ground assault had begun. The fighting on Sanctum's surface was fluid and ever-changing, bordering on chaotic at times. Tyranids surged at Imperial defenders, but over time, as more of their leader units landed, the synaptic intelligence allowed their tactics to become progressively more cunning. Assaults of swarming Tyranids would then start to overlap. Ambushes and outflanking maneuvers were becoming more common, and worst of all, the Swarm Lord had been sighted on the field. It's not explicitly stated, but it appears that the Hive Mind and its leader units were able to psychically learn about Leontis and track down the region of the planet he was defending. Because of this, the Swarm Lord knew where to press its attack on Leontis. Things were starting to go from bad to worse very quickly. 
Another swarm of Tyranids attacked from below Leontus' position, which had managed to tunnel underground. And just to make things even worse, a trio of Norn emissaries were stalking their way around the battlefield. These are a new bioform, and they are used primarily as assassins, but they are monstrously powerful. Their name suggests, as a Norn emissary, that they have a strong link to the Norn Queen of the Tyranid Hive fleets. So, if you go by the naming suggestion, they are a emissary, a representative of the very core of a Hive fleet. So, a Norn Queen is responsible for creating the various Tyranids from the raw biomass that is accumulated, basically acting like an alien queen from the Alien franchise. Um, the only problem is that these had never been encountered before, and if you want to put your tinfoil hat on, it might just be because no one had ever survived to report about them. It was at this crucial moment that Leontus earned his status as a hero of the Imperium. He applied every ounce of his skill as a strategist, diplomat, or even an unforgiving drill master to uphold Imperial forces. When he wasn't directing troop movements and firing patterns, he was going to the outer battlements and marshalling the battle lines while plasma and spore mines detonated overhead, not even once flinching. Wherever he went, he rose the spirits of Imperial forces, able to gauge instantly whether a band of soldiers needed a rousing speech, a harsh reminder of duty, or even a humble and heartfelt expression of honour. He moved with half a mile long trail of bodyguards, advisors, command, and communication staff in tow. He worked relentlessly to outthink and outmaneuver the Hive fleet. This was where the Norn emissaries struck. They split up and they each had their own targets. One killed hundreds of command staff and destroyed a countless number of cogitator arrays. The second took out a score of dreadnoughts and the third came after Leontus. It scaled the snow-whipped peak of the tallest mountain, lurking and waiting for Leontus to emerge. When he did arrive to bolster local troops, it followed him with its black eyes, leaping into the air and dropping with sword-like talons extended, ready to slam down directly on top of him. Leontus realized only too late what was happening. Missiles streaked into the Norn Emissary as a Custodes gunship passed overhead, and after sending the Emissary flying, it dropped into the battle Trajan Valoris and multiple Custodes clad in Auroramite. Leontis was saved for the time being, but the Emissary was far from dead. When the gunship tried to make another pass, the Emissary swung with its huge talons in a scything arc, tearing the cockpit from the gunship as it spiralled down in flames. It then wheeled around and surged with serpentine speed towards Leontis, ignoring the Custodes completely. The Golden Warriors moved as a blur, shoving Leontus' bodyguards away to block the Norn Emissary. The Xeno Assassin lunged, snatching up a Custodes and tearing an arm from his body before hurling him away into the distance. Trajan Valoris shattered several of its talons, to which it responded by feigning back and then springing past him and attempted to snatch up the Lord Solar. 
somehow, Leontus was able to hurl himself away from the monster's grasp as it was raked with las fire and plasma weapons from his bodyguards. The monster swatted these soldiers aside like insects. Several custodies were able to hack into its flesh, but its eyes were still fixed on Leontus. It lashed out again with blistering speed, ripping a custodes in two, then kicking another so hard that his head was sent flying off his body, vanishing over a mountain before his body could even drop to the ground. Another custodes was stomped into the ground, crushed by the massive beast. It was slowed down under the unbelievable firepower and key attacks from the custodians. Still, it fought on, snapping the neck of a custodes with its tail and hurling itself into the Leontus. Thankfully, Trajan Valoris was able to save him by swinging the Watcher's axe in a meteoric arc, embedding it into the side of the emissary's skull, smashing its head aside. The Norn emissary had been killed, Leontus had been saved, and the defenders of Sanctum had begun to receive reinforcements. The battle was mostly over but there was still a world's worth of war to be raged. This new bit of lore is amazing, and I love it, but these Norn emissaries are definitely a big problem. The simple fact that one of them was able to kill multiple custodes and even speed past Trajan Valoris is mind-blowing. I would say that puts them above the Custodes in raw power. I mean, it's pure insanity, and all the while it was just fixed on killing Leontus, knowing that he was the main priority, and what the Hive Mind wanted it to eliminate. So this to me is scary, but it kind of fills me with a bit of hope that Leontus may be seen as a bigger threat to the Hive Mind than even Trajan Valoris and his Custodes. Uh, that does manage to cover a large extent of the new lore from the Leviathan core book, uh, but I am very excited to hear more about Leontus in the future, and I would love to know what you all think about him. Uh, depending on how this video does, I may even cover the Space Battle of Sanctum as well, so make sure that you let me know if you do want to see more of this kind of content by liking and subscribing. But that's pretty much a good point to call it for today. So I will see you all on the next one. I've been Kiv, and I'm out.